From the Opepco Studios in Oklahoma City, you are watching The Press Row. I'm Jenny Carlson here with Barry Trammell. Time for our weekly inbox segment, Barry. We take questions from the emails and try to answer them here on video. If people want to send their questions, we might try to answer them right here. Let's get right to it. From David to start with. David says, the Oregon heist in the tall timber belt was well documented, forcing an apology from the Pac-10. T. Boone is the latest high-profile person to question official judgment in the OSU loss. Sour grapes or maybe some merit? Obviously talking about OU Oregon a few years ago when the Pac-10 did apologize. What do you take? What do you say about this? I think there was some merit to it. I think it was uh, some bogus officiating. OSU, 15 major penalties. I think as many as six of those were bad calls. Uh, but even if you take away the flags, just the administration of the game you could tell was sloppy. Um, the third quarter clock uh, runs out um, two, three seconds later. Uh, Arizona snaps the ball, throws, the, uh, throws a pass uh, into the end zone. Uh, what, what are these guys doing? Are they not paying attention? Um, I thought the bad officials were in the NFL, Barry. Mike Come Gundy, on. Yeah, Mike Gundy uh, had to challenge a call. When's the last time you, you saw a college uh, coach have to challenge a call? They review everything. Uh, but Gundy was forced to challenge a call early. Uh, he was upheld. He was right, OSU. Uh, Arizona had 12 men on the field. Uh, but it seemed like maybe the officials didn't like uh, the comeuppance of uh, Gundy questioning. Um, it, it just didn't go good for OSU. Played terrible, right. not making excuses, but the officiating was shoddy. Well, and I wonder, too, this game being on the Pac-12 network, I wonder if more <laughs> Cowboy fans that had the opportunity to see this game if they might be raising more of a stink because, Barry, I have to admit, you know, there weren't a whole lot of people around here that got a chance to see this game. If you went to maybe a Buffalo Wild Wings or somewhere uh, that was, uh, you know, showing the game, you could have seen it. But so many people didn't get to see this game, so they couldn't really judge with their own eyes. Were these bad calls? Were they not? You know, a lot of it's just hearsay. So, uh, you know, it sounds like there were some issues. Surely the Pac-12 is looking at those, moving ahead with those officials. All right, back to the inbox. This one from James. James <laughs> said, I was thinking about the possibility for getting a five-year, maybe a quarter cent sales tax bond issue on the ballot in Oklahoma City to pay the NBA luxury tax on behalf of the Thunder. I'd like to see that. How about that, Barry? <laughs> you know what? I'd like to see it too, because Oklahoma City would make history. Uh, we're not building buildings. We're uh, paying the luxury tax so that James Harden can stay on the roster. Uh, let me tell you what. That would be a first time. That would be wow. a first. Oklahoma City's done a great job of supporting civic improvements, everything from the library to the, uh, the maps, uh, everything involved. Uh, but no, we're not <laughs> passing a tax so that uh, the Thunder can pay the luxury tax and help millionaires pay millionaires. That one would not uh, fly. It's not going to get on the ballot, but if it did, I think the uh, it'd be about a 95% defeat. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. And you know what? I think it's going to take something almost miraculous like something like that passing to keep James Harden, Barry. We had a chance to, to uh, hear from Sam Presti earlier this week when they had the official announcement of Serge Ibaka's uh, extension. It's obviously uh, been a couple weeks ago since he signed that deal, but had a chance to finally hear from Serge and, and Thunder Brass. And it just sounds more and more like there's a lot of qualifiers to this deal. They want James Harden, obviously they want James Harden, but a lot of buts and, uh, you know, by the same token and things that Sam Presti's saying make you think it's going to be pretty hard to get this deal done. And uh, a luxury tax. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if Oklahoma City can help in this one. All right, back to the inbox. This one from Chris. Chris says, I keep hearing if and when Seattle gets a new arena that the Thunder might move back. Will that ever happen? Are those just stupid people? Well, Barry, the Seattle is going to build an arena. The Thunder's not going to move back, though. Chris, where are you hearing this? Yeah. I mean, uh, I, got a, I got an idea for Does you, Chris. Does Chris live in Seattle, by the way? Get off the message boards, Chris. Get off the message boards. Because uh, uh, if, if, if people are telling you that uh, the Thunder's moving back to Seattle, the answer to your question is yes. They are just stupid people. <laughs> the Thunder's not moving back. Uh, the ship has sailed. Now, I do think Seattle's going to get a squad. I agree. Uh, you know, probably the Kings, but maybe not. Uh, but I think... Well, you know, fairly soon, within five years, I'd say, I think there will be a Seattle Supersonics again, but it won't be uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder. No way. The Thunder's not going anywhere. People don't have to worry about that. But yeah, I think Seattle deserves to be an NBA city. It was for a long time before they had the problems with the arena and the team left town. I think it's a great market for the NBA. I think the NBA wants to be there, but they needed to have the arena to be a feasible team in Seattle. Now it sounds like that's going to happen relatively soon. 
you know, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe one of these franchises that's in trouble, you know, maybe a Toronto or I, I mean, there's a lot of options, Barry. You mentioned the Kings, but I think there are several teams that might fare better in Seattle than in their current cities. All right, back to the inbox. This one from Jim. Jim says, do you know if the Big 12 is considering Northern Illinois? It certainly would be a plus for the, UI, the NIU program and pull in the Chicago area. Barry, what about this with Big 12 well, expansion? I love this question because I love when we talk about conference realignment and Big 12 expansion, I love all the different options people throw in the pot. And this was a new one. I mean, I really hadn't heard anybody bring up Northern Illinois. Everybody from Notre Dame uh, and USC yeah, to yeah, Northern yeah, Illinois. But, uh, I mean, the answer is no chance. Um, yeah, it'd be a plus for Northern Illinois. You know, it'd be a be a plus for Southern Illinois. It'd be a plus for anybody that joined the Big 12 uh, from the Mid-American Conference or the Missouri Valley it or It could be a plus else. for Illinois. Come on, let's <laughs> but, be honest. But no, it would, it would not pull in the Chicago area. There's tons of Chicago uh, college football fans, and guess what? None of them want to watch Northern Illinois. So it would not, uh, uh, it's not going to happen. I mean, the, you, you, got, you need a name brand. That's what it's all about. It's about name brand in Northern Illinois. Very solid mid-major program, play really good football, almost beat Iowa uh, in week one, but uh, no, not, uh, not going to pull in the Chicago area. Obviously with Notre Dame and deciding, with the exception of football, that they're going to go to the ACC earlier this week, Notre Dame is a possibility for the Big 12 seems out of the question now, which was, it was something that was kind of being tossed around. But Barry, I know you've mentioned Louisville, and I think Cincinnati's another one we've talked about before. To me, those still seem like real feasible options and would fit better with the Big 12 standard as opposed to a Northern Illinois. Those two teams are still on the, on the table. Yeah, they are, but I don't think the Big 12 is going to expand. I don't I, either. I think they're going to stick at 10. They might go to 11, uh, but probably not. I don't even think they want to get to 12. They don't want a conference title game. They like things the way they are. Well, with this TV deal, it would split up the pie more, and frankly, I think the teams want to each get $20 million from that TV deal. Hey, be sure to stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com and every day in the Oklahoman.